Ken Shirley movie open on a title card that reads, number one, how they first met. Cut to exterior elementary school in, a, in, a, in an urban area. We see cars from the 1940s parked and driving by. A graphic reads 1948. Cut to the interior of one of the third grade classes. The class is made up of a female teacher, 15 young boys, and one young girl. Written on the blackboard is, in 1490 blank, Columbus sailed the ocean Black. The teacher says, all right, class, look at what's on the blackboard and let's fill in the blanks. The teacher pointing to the word. In 1490, the teacher waits for the response. Nobody responds. The little girl's hand goes half-heartedly up. The teacher recognizes the little girl. Shirley, to... Teacher is dismayed that no one else has a clue. <laughs> right. She points again to the blackboard, the teacher in the class in unison. Columbus sailed the ocean. Teacher waits for a response, but gets none. Shirley's hand goes half-heartedly up. Teacher says, now come on, somebody else besides Shirley. Columbus sailed the ocean. One of the little boys next to Shirley offers a response. First boy, slow. <laughs> slow? First boy says, sure, it was only 1490-something. <laughs> Two, yeah, and back then everything was slow. <laughs> they didn't even have out, outboard motors. Second boy says, they didn't have any kind of motors. Teacher is frustrated, as is Shirley. Teacher says, let's try it again, boys. Columbus sailed the ocean. No response from the boys. Finally, Shirley blurts out, blue, blue, it's blue for the love of God. Teacher says, and that's how we know the world is. No response. Shirley, round. <coughs> The classroom door opens and the principal, Mr. Polyakov, and a female third grader with a little scripted L sewn on her blouse. <laughs> the teacher says, class, look who's here, our principal, Mr. Polyakov. Now everybody say, good morning, Mr. Polyakov. Class says, good morning, Mr. The name becomes mispronounced into gibberish for the rest of the <laughs> says, again, class? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Fyvizander. <laughs> Mr. Polyakov, this heart is Polyakov. Poly, it's Polyakov. Class, uh, I'd like to introduce you to your new classmate, Laverne DeFazio. Laverne waves with her hand meekly at the class. Mr. Polyakov says, Laverne has come to us all the way from New York City. Actually, she's from Brooklyn. The class erupts into enthusiastic applause. Polyakov says to the teacher, why are they doing that? Laverne says, I don't know, but it happens all the time. <laughs> the Polyakov says, why don't you find a seat, Laverne? Laverne looks around and sees the only open desk is next to Shirley. Mr. Polyakov stays on to chat with the teacher. Laverne sits down next to Shirley and looks around, noticing that they are the only girls. Laverne to Shirley. Hi. Polyakov <laughs> to the teacher. See, she talks through her nose, just like the other one. We thought she'd fit right in. The first boy said, don't believe everything they tell you. The world is round. Yeah, right. The second boy says, yeah, and it spins. The first boy says, if it spins, how come when I jump up, then when I come down, I'm not someplace else. <laughs> Second boy says, good point. Returned <coughs> to Shirley, so, uh, moving to the two boys. Are they like this all the time? Shirley says, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did these guys?
guys get into the second smartest class in the third grade? What makes you think this is the second smartest? <laughs> the girl says, well, that's where I was in Brooklyn. I just figured. <laughs> Shirley says, fourth. Fourth? Shirley says, fourth smartest. <laughs> Out of four. <laughs> This is the dumbest? <laughs> Shirley says, by far. The man says, I've never been in the dumbest. Shirley says, welcome to hard times. <laughs> the man says, but you're not as dumb as them. Shirley says, that's not much of a compliment. <laughs> no, I'm being punished. I'm, I, I used to be in the second smartest, but I get, got sent down here for cheating on a test. <laughs> A cheetah? I was framed. A girl named Rosie Greenbaum would take the crib sheet to the back of my blouse. I owe her one. The second boy says, and if the world is round, why would my feet be flat? The first boy says, you've given this a lot of thought. The bird says, is this as bad as it gets? The says, nope. A young Lenny and Squiggy enter the classroom. Squiggy says, hello. <laughs> Shirley says, this is. <laughs> Lenny pointing to Laverne. Says, hey, hey Squig, look, another girl. <laughs> Squiggy sticking his wrist in his mouth as he goes, Ooh. <laughs> Well, that helps the odds. <laughs> Leonard, Andrew, please take your seats. Laverne to Shirley says, why did they come in together? Shirley says, one of them can't find his way to the bathroom. <laughs> Laverne says, which one? Shirley says, I don't know, it depends on what day it is. <laughs> don't ask. Teacher, as Mr. Polyakov is leaving, says, all right, class, say goodbye to Mr. P Mr. Polyakov. Goodbye, Mr. Kravinyakov. <laughs> the teacher starts passing out containers of milk. Says, Class, it's time for our milk break. Pass the cartons back, please. As they do, we get our first good look at the other students. They all converse with each other in Lenny and Squiggy ease. <laughs> Laverne is somewhat stunned. Shirley takes it in stride. Shirley to Laverne. Thank you. For what? For being so normal. I'm happy to do it. I finally have somebody to talk to who isn't strange. Well, that's nice to hear. The milk cartons are passed back to Laverne and Shirley. During the preceding dialogue, Laverne takes out her lunchbox opens it, and takes out a paper cup and a glass bottle of Pepsi-Cola. She bites the bottle cap off with her teeth and pours the milk and, and the Pepsi into the cup simultaneously. She takes a big gulp. Shirley, to herself, I'm all alone. <laughs> Cut to a title card reading how, number two, how they first met. Cut to newsreel footage of Neville Chamberlain returning from M Munich in 1938 and saying, I have met with Herr Hitler, and I can tell you most assuredly that there will be peace in our time. <laughs> Cut to the exterior of a hospital in Milwaukee. The graphic reads 1938. Cut to exterior maternity ward waiting room. The sign on the door indicates this. Cut to a man pacing nervously by himself in the waiting room. He might resemble Michael McKeon, played Lenny, in the original series. A nurse enters the room. The nurse says, hello, sir. And his name is uh, Kosnovsky. Yes, uh, what is it? Any news? Am I a father? The nurse says, I don't know. I'm on a break. <laughs> you got a light? Kosnovsky reaches into his pocket, pulling out cigars. Look at this. All these cigars and no, ma and no matches. Sorry, I feel like an idiot. 
The door opens and an elegantly dressed man who might resemble David Lander, who plays Squiggy, enters. He is Mr. Squigmon. <laughs> Squigmon, jauntily. Hello, allow me to introduce myself. I am State Superior Court Judge, the Honorable Rexford P. Rex Squigmon. Nurse says, have you got a light, Rex? <laughs> <laughs> of course, my dear. He lights a cigarette. I've got a light heart, a light head, I'm light on my feet, I'm just one great big bulb of light. The nurse, uh, uh, as she leaves the room, says, usually takes me at least six drinks to get me there. <laughs> Kosnowski says, Rex, uh, I'm uh, Phil Kosnowski. Squidman says, please, call me your honor. Uh, Kosnowski says, all right, your honor. So your wife's having a baby? Squidman says, yes. Isn't that something? He said, well, he said, you don't seem very nervous about it. Squidward says, oh, I'm petrified. I just try not to show it. Kavnowski said, well, you're doing a heck of a job. Squidward says, actually, my happiness has completely overcome my fear. I just heard it on the radio. England has just made peace with Germany. Kavnowski says, how nice for them. Says, Don't you understand, man? I'm going to be even richer than I am already. And the doctor says, well, how rich are you? Sweetwater says, you've heard of the Depression? <laughs> and the doctor says, well, of course. Sweetwater says, I barely give it a thought. <laughs> On occasion, I have been heard to say, what Depression? Mm -hmm. And the doctor says, that's rich. Sweetwater says, I don't get around. And the doctor says, I'm not that rich. I, I drive a Chevrolet. <laughs> Squidward says, oh, that's a shame. You know, state superior court judging is merely a sideline for me. Something I just <coughs> flirt with. I derive much more satisfaction from my true calling. Beer investment. <coughs> and he says, I just drink it. <laughs> says, that's why you'll never get rich. I have a mind for malts, a head for hops. I know beer, and beer knows me. Kanowski says, a lot of times it makes me belch. <laughs> not listening to That's why I'm the major stockholder in the four biggest breweries in town. Paps, Schatz, Kanowski says, Schlitz and Blatz. Kanowski says, that's right, you know your beers. Paps, Schatz, Schlitz and Blatz. That's a lot of beer, Rex. <laughs> Please, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. Uh, Squidward says, actually, I've got a lot more paps than Schlitz and a lot, le a lot less shots than Blatz. But that's all going to change. <coughs> says, You're going to get more Schlitz than paps and more shots than Blatz? <laughs> Squidward says, no, that would be a fool's mission. <laughs> I'm liquidating. Kosnowski <laughs> says, that's what I usually do after a Blatz and a Schlitz. <laughs> Great man says, you don't quite understand. I'm divesting. I'm selling my shots. I'm purging my paps, shucking my Schlitz, and blitzing my Blatz. <laughs> and now she says, they're not good anymore? Scream says, oh, they're all right. But I've come across something that will put them all out of business. <laughs>